Thank you for joining us today. This is a workshop on decoding San Francisco's lottery preference programs. Uh, this workshop will be presented by myself, Rea Segura, with the SF LGBT Community Center. We also have Andrea Nelson with the Lottery Preference Program Manager, and then Sharon Herrera-Liglon, who is the Displacement Tenant Housing Program Coordinator. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so in case you wanted to turn on your closed captioning, um, you can do so on your computer and your cell phone or tablet. Uh, you're going to go to the bottom on the uh, Zoom. You'll see like a tool bar and you should either see a closed captioning button or you can go to the three dots that say more and there should be a captions tab that you can click on to turn on your captions. Uh, if you're having problems with uh, turning them on or any other technical issues, just let us know in the chat. Uh, so there's some housekeeping. So uh, this workshop is being recorded for the uh, Homeownership SF YouTube channel. Uh, please remain on mute until the Q&A. We'll be holding Q&As at the end of this workshop. So please hold on till then. Um, add your questions into the chat for the Q&A. Um, there should be a Q&A um, tab that you can go ahead and enter your questions. Um, if you're having any technical difficulty, difficulties, let us know in the chat or email us. Uh, you can email us there at A-N-J-A-L-I at homeownershipsf.org if you're having any technical difficulties and need support with that. So Homeownership SF um, consists of these uh, member agencies, Asian Inc., Balance, the SF LGBT Center, MEDA, and SFHDC. I think we went past, there was one more before that. There we go. Um, so I'm with the SF LGBT Center. Um, there's my info there. Uh, I'm part of the financial services department uh, and we offer home ownership counseling, rental counseling, uh, debt and budget counseling and credit review reporting, uh, reviewing. Uh, we also um, provide an array of other services, such as uh, employment services, uh, youth services, um, and referral and information services. So please visit us. Give us a visit. Thanks, Reyes. Of course. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in. Um, so what are lottery preferences? So preferences are programs that give certain groups of people a better chance at getting housing. And if you qualify for a preference, it will help you rank higher in the lottery. And if you do not qualify for a preference, you will be ranked below those who do. An applicant with a preference must still meet the program eligibility rules for any housing unit, such as income requirements for the unit. And last, only one person needs to qualify for the preference. When at least one person on your application qualifies for a lottery preference, the entire household gets a higher lottery ranking. Also, lastly, for each lottery housing lottery listing on Dahlia, the lottery preferences that are eligible for that development are listed under the eligibility section. Okay, so the following lottery preferences are provided in order of priority in city-sponsored affordable housing. I'm going to give a brief overview of each now and then take a deeper dive in the coming slides. So starting with the highest ranking lottery preference, the certificate of preference, or also known as COP, 
is available for households and their direct descendants displaced by the former redevelopment agency in the late 1960s and 1970s in San Francisco. After the COP, the Displaced Tenant Housing Preference, also known as DTHP, is available to households who have experienced displacement due to an Ellis or owner move-in eviction, displacement due to fire or an expiring affordability restriction, or removal of an unlawful unit. The next in the lottery ranking order is the Neighborhood Resident Housing Preference Program, otherwise known as NRHP, uh, which is available to households who live in the supervisorial district or within one half mile of the housing development. Then the San Francisco Live or Work Preference ranks next after the Neighborhood Resident lottery preference. And it's available to those who live and or work in San Francisco. And ranking within each of these four primary preferences is the veterans lottery preference. So applicants who claim the veterans preference will rise to the top of the applicant pool within each of these four other preferences. And I'll get into that later. So for example, if an applicant lives or works in San Francisco and has a veteran in the household on the application, they will rise to the top of the live or work preference lottery results. After all applicants with lottery preferences receive a rank in the housing lottery, the general category pool applicants receive a lottery rank. Okay, so let's start with the certificate of preference. As I mentioned, the Certificate of Preference is available to residents who were displaced by the former San Francisco Redevelopment Agency in the late 1960s and 1970s and their direct descendants. Most of these displaced households lived in the Western Addition and Hunters Point neighborhoods, with others in Soma, Diamond Heights, and along Geary, and among other scattered locations in the city. While the original displaced households rank the highest in housing lotteries and are eligible for all city-sponsored affordable housing, the direct descendant COP holders can only use their COP for former San Francisco Redevelopment Agency sponsored units. This is also known as the Office of Community Investment and Infrastructure or OCII. And that's just at this time. For each housing lottery listing on Dahlia, there's a section titled Lottery Preferences Under Eligibility. And that is where it states the descendants are either eligible or it won't say anything about descendants in the description. And that's how um, applicants know whether or not the COPD for direct descendants is eligible for that listing. Okay, if someone thinks they or their family was displaced by the former San Francisco Redevelopment Agency, then an applicant can search for their family's displacement address to confirm and apply for the certificate of preference on our MOHCD webpage. Um, we ask applicants for their family's names and documentation when they apply to show their family's lineage and to show proof of identity. If they do not have documentation, we work with applicants to acquire it. Once approved for a COP, COP holders can apply on Dahlia for housing and contact property managers directly to be on a building's wait list. After the lottery, those COP holders then work with the leasing agent and MOHCD to apply for housing by providing necessary income and tax documentation. The COP does not expire and it can be used twice, once for rental and once for home ownership, with the exception of senior COP holders who can use their COP a second time for affordable senior rental properties. And 100% of lottery units can be set aside for applicants with a certificate of preference. I'm gonna pass it on to Sharon to do the next bit. Thank you, Andy. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon Herrera, and I am the Displaced Tenant Housing Preference Program Coordinator, and I will be going over in detail the five categories that we have under DTHP, which is our second uh, most popular preference for our city um, available units. So 
the first category that we have is um, people who are eligible to apply for the DTHP are those who have been evicted by the Ellis Act. So what is the Ellis Act? The Ellis Act enables property owners to remove their rental properties from the market um, when they no longer want to rent it out. And we know that San Francisco has a long history of displacement due to this. And that is the reason why the um, displaced tenant housing preference was passed by the Board of Supervisors and also extended for those who were being affected by the second category, which is the owner moving evictions, which is similar to the Ellis Act, but in this case, the property owner is taking back their property from the rental market because they want to move into the unit or because they are claiming a relative wants to move into that unit. So for those households that have been displaced for an Ellis Act and owner moving evictions, usually the property owner files an eviction notice with the rent board. And that is how we know who are the eligible households based on the displacement address. However, we acknowledge that many times landlords do not file the proper documentation with the rent board. And if the tenant is being served with an Ellis eviction or an owner moving eviction, and they have the documents to show that to our office, then we can also process the DTHP application with that documentation. Um, or third category are those households that have been displaced by a damaging fire. And the damaging fire had to be so extent that um, the household cannot return to that same unit at least for six months. So if the, if the household cannot return into the unit for at least six months, they can claim the DTHP and the only additional document that we ask the household to also submit, it's a fire verification form, usually issued by HSA, Human Services Agency. And we also understand that many times that is a barrier. So as long as the household uh, submits their application and they let us know that they were displaced by a damaging fire, we can also contact HSA and get the fire verification for, for, for the uh, displacement address. Or for category, it's uh, for those households living in buildings with expiring affordability restrictions. So for many of our projects, um, they have affordability restrictions that many times last for the time of the project, for the lifetime of the project. However, because um, there were some buildings that were built in the past without these um, permanent restrictions. Now we have certain buildings that are BMR or 100% affor affordable that will expire within their affordability restrictions. So for those specific households, we also offer the displaced tenant housing preference certificate. And as of today, the only building that is being affected by this category is the Fillmore Center. Um, and our last category that was passed last year, it's for those households living in unlawful residential units deemed by the planning commission. Um, those, house, those affected households can also claim a DTHP. So everyone in the household can apply for their own um, DTHP certificate individually. This, this certificate doesn't get issued by households, it gets issued by the displaced person. So if we have a household of five individuals uh, that was displaced by an Ellis Act eviction, then those five individuals individually can claim their own certificate. Um, they, again, they must provide uh, documentation to show what type of displacement it was, and they can apply online or in person. And the certificate must be used within six years from the date of displacement. So when we say the date of displacement, we mean the date that the Ellis Act or owner moving eviction was filed with the rent board or the uh, eviction notice was served to the tenant or six years from the time that the fire happened, six years from the time that the affordability restrictions expire uh, in one of our buildings, 
or six years from the time that the planning commission deem a, um, a unit unlawful. Um, so for example, if a person got an eviction notice in 2020 and they decide to apply right now in 2024, they will only have two years to use their certificate because those four years already happened from 2020 to 2024. So they only got two more years to use their certificate. So that's why it's very important for all household members and eligible applicants to submit their application as soon as they know that they have been affected by one of these displacements. Um, the certificate can be only used once either for a rental opportunity or for a home ownership opportunity. And that is why it's so important for every single household member to apply for a certificate because if they, if the family moves into a rental property together and they only exercise one individual certificate and later on they decide to purchase a property, then they can use another um, household member certificate to apply for that home ownership opportunity since one of them have already exercised their certificate for a rental opportunity. Um, in terms of housing, the DDHB is only eligible for those buildings with five units or more. And there's an only 20% set aside for these city sponsored units. So for example, if in the uh, first lottery that we have for a new project, there are 20 buildings, I mean, sorry, 20 units in the building, only 20% of those units will be set aside for the DHB holders in the lottery. And once the, those units are filled up, we have to wait until some of those units are vacant so that we can open it again for the DHB certificates. And you, Usually, we do have a lot of those units, uh, not a lot of them filled up in the first lotteries. So the best way to find out about that is always looking at the preferences listed on Dahlia to see what preferences apply for that specific uh, listing. And I will pass it back to Andy to talk about the neighborhood resident housing preference. Thanks, Sharon. Okay, so the, the neighborhood resident housing preference, which is the next preference in line. So we went through certificate of preference, displaced tenant housing preference. Now we're at the neighborhood resident housing preference in order of priority. Um, so the NRHP, also known as NRHP, is available in all new city sponsored housing projects. And 40% of available lottery units are um, set aside for applicants with NRHP, except for some state funded projects, housing development projects, um, where 25% of available lottery units can be set aside for the neighborhood resident housing preference folks. Um, you're eligible for this preference if you are a San Francisco resident, and if you currently live in the same supervisorial district as or a half mile from the city sponsored project. So if you can picture with me somebody who lives on the edge of a supervisorial district, and then also the housing development is on the edge of a supervisorial district, then that housing developments, you know, it the the um the boundary of the NRHP is for that supervisorial district and then the one half mile that kind of goes outside of that supervisorial district. So that's where we capture folks who are both in the district as well as a half mile around it. Um, you will need, when you apply for this, you'll need to add documents to your application that prove your current address, such as a utility bill or school records or public benefit records that are within 45 days of that application date um, when you apply. And these documents are used for eligibility confirmation after the lottery. And then I'm That's going to, thank you. And I'm gonna talk about the leave or work in San Francisco preference, which is um, our last preference by itself. And usually it's available um, in every housing lottery that we have. And there are two ways to be eligible for this preference. So either uh, you already live in San Francisco and you have documentation to show um, your name tied to the address in San Francisco, such as a utility bill, a school records, public benefit records, 
um, or you work at least 75% of your working hours in San Francisco. And this can be demonstrated through a letter from an employer, pay stubs, uh, to show that you are working in San Francisco at least 75% of your time. Um, we ask every single applicant claiming for this preference uh, to provide documentation on their Dahlia uh, application so that we can verify and confirm the address. Um, and, and after the lottery, we will also verify those documents as well. So that's why it's very important if you have any questions about what type of document um, it's accepted, you can let us know and we can work with you in your household. Okay, and then the veteran's preference. So this benefits people who have served in the US active military, naval or air service, and who qualify for another housing preference that we just talked about. So if you are a veteran and you also, you know, have a certificate of preference or you have a displaced tenant housing preference, or you live in the neighborhood, or you live or work in San Francisco, then this helps you rank within that other preference. So <laughs> the veteran provides documentation to MoCD before the lottery to demonstrate that there's ser their service. And that documentation can be a certificate of release, a discharge from active duty, or a certificate for honorable discharge. Um, veteran applicants in their household will rise to the top of the pool of each affordable housing lottery preference that the veteran qualifies for. So for example, an application with a veteran who is also a displaced tenant housing preference holder, holder will rise to the top of the DTHP pool. Similarly, if you are a veteran and you also hold a certificate of preference, then you'd be at the top of the certificate of preference pool. After the lottery, veteran households will need to meet the building's eligibility criteria, just like all of the other applicants. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna play a brief video. So we are wrapping this presentation up with a few lottery preference tips. So first, when applying to each lottery, um, be sure to claim all the preferences that you are eligible for. 
why you may ask <laughs> well if you aren't contacted in a if if you aren't contacted in a higher ranking preference, you could still have an opportunity for a unit in a lower ranked preference. So for example, say you claim the displaced tenant housing preference, the veterans preference, and the liver work preference, but you maybe your DTHP is no longer eligible for various reasons, then your veterans preference won't be linked to your DTHP, to your displaced tenant housing preference, but it would still be linked to your liver work preference. So you would rise to the top of the liver work preference pool with a veterans preference. We advise folks to always claim liver work in San Francisco if they qualify, no matter which other preferences they also claim. So I'll say that again, always claim liver work in San Francisco if you qualify for that, because you will always fall to that bucket. Um, for all preferences you claim that are validated after the lottery, you will need to submit valid preference proof when applying. So COP and DTHP, so that Certificate of Preference and Displaced Tenant Housing Preference holders need to hold their certificate before applying to a housing unit, meaning you need to go online and apply for that Certificate of Preference or Displaced Tenant Housing Preference and then be awarded or approved for that preference before you go ahead and apply for a housing lottery and claim that preference. Um, each preference requires different documentation and it's on our webpage. So um, is made clear there which documentation you need and make sure you provide the right documentation. Otherwise you may miss your chance to get that housing. the slide, Andy? This is mine. I'm sorry. I thought it wasn't. <laughs> um, okay, so that concludes our presentation. Is there, um, maybe we'll open it up now for questions. Thank you all so much. Hello, Alicia Mayo um, of Clarity Media. The current um, slide that I'm looking at says Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development Lottery Preferences at sfgov.org. Is this where we'll go to apply for the certificates and be pre-qualified? We, um, we have various web pages for certificates, so I can put those in the um, in the chat for folks. The lottery preferences email is for questions, comments, anything. So you could always email us there with your questions, um, but we can put specific web pages in the chat for you for each of the different preferences. Yes, I, I need to get qualified for the certificate of preference and for the displaced um, um, displaced tenants. I mean, uh, yeah. So I need to get qualified and I'll need those websites where I can do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And also to add to that, if you uh, need support in any way to submit your application, either in person or online, we also have an amazing network of uh, housing counselors that can help you uh, to submit your application online or walk you through the process as to how to claim each one of the preferences. Great, and where will I find those counselors? And we, we can also provide um, that information. I believe that we also have a slide um, with that information available. Thank you. There were several questions asked in the chat. Can you, um, Andy and Reyes, go through those, please? Yes. Um, I'll go ahead and start from the top. Um, so I see a question from G, and they ask, um, in displaced categories, is Alice Act higher than OMI? The answer is no. All of the subcategories that we mentioned under the displaced tenant housing preference program are the same. Um, it doesn't matter which category you qualify for. If it's for Ellis Act, owner moving, fire eviction, or displacement, uh, expiring affordability restrictions, or unlawful residential units. If you fall within one of those five categories, you can claim 
DTHB and DTHB is our second biggest preference uh, below certificate of preference. So all of those people on that bucket for displaced tenant housing preference will be right below of the COP applicants. Perfect. Okay, we have another question in chat from Isla. Um, so they're asking, um, so they uh, qualified and applied for a lottery, um, but since have moved, uh, would their uh, neighborhood preference still apply even though they moved, but they lived uh, in the neighborhood when they applied? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, you have to live within the neighborhood within 45 days of the application process. So if you no longer live in the neighborhood, then you don't qualify. Perfect. And then uh, G asks, will the video slides and your contact information be available? So yes, this video was recorded. It'll be uploaded on YouTube to the Home Ownership SF uh, YouTube page. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll move on. So uh, Alicia asks, with this program, will we need to complete any special orientations before applying for the lottery? So uh, for home ownership, yes, you will need to complete uh, your 10 hour home buyer education. For rentals, there is no required uh, orientations or workshops. And then we'll move on to Jeffrey um, who asks, uh, where can you find the Dahlia BMR apartments that are ready to rent without the waiting list? Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and put that a link in the chat to the Dahlia uh, rental uh, rentals. So you can go ahead and take a look at all the available rentals that are available now. Uh, they will all still be lottery based, however. Okay. And then I see someone with the hand up, a Zoom user. Uh, if you want to come off mute and ask your question, you can. Hi, um, my name is Ashraf. Um, thank you for this workshop. Um, I just wanted to ask about like, um, currently like I have uh, been selected for a lottery and also like reached out for counseling help. But I was wondering like, um, like the documents that you have to upload, you know, like, um, like with the counselor, I have an appointment on th Wednesday or Thursday, but I wanted to know, like, does the counselor like tells you like, th like it's his own, like online or over the phone? Like, is there in-person help? Like, cause sometimes it's hard for me to learn, um, when I'm like on the phone, um, it's much uh, easier if I have like someone that could help me like understand the process. So even if I don't get accepted this time, next time I could do it on my own and like be able to upload the documents on my own. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to depend on the different agencies and the different counselors. And um, usually they will offer, you know, the different ways to meet with you. Uh, for me, here at the SFLGBT Center, we can meet either in person or uh, we could do it over Zoom where uh, I usually just share my screen. Um, so that way, um, whoever is having a session with me can view what I'm looking at as well. But yeah, I'm uh, me, I do offer in person as well. I, I just base it off of whoever, uh, if the client needs uh, different ways on meeting, I'll, I'll go ahead and open that up. Uh, to the different ways. But um, yeah, just go ahead and um, ask the counselor if you can meet in person, and I'm sure they can set something up for you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Of course. Um, okay, and then we'll go ahead and continue with the questions on the chat. Um, Alicia asked, what kind of apartments are available? So we went ahead and uh, put a link to the Dahlia Rentals. You can go ahead and click that link and look at all the available apartments that are available for rent. Okay, and then... 
And then Alicia, she says, please share any senior housing list. I'm on limited income. Okay, so I do know that Open House does put together a monthly uh, list of affordable housings uh, for seniors and those who are seniors and on low income or limited income. So I can go ahead and put that in the chat for you to take a look. It's not um, part of uh, MOHCDs, but it's um, all affordable housing. So I'll go ahead and put that in the in the chat. Um, if you have any other questions, raise your hand or put it in the chat. I'm, I'm just going to piggyback on what you said, Reyes, to Alicia. And Alicia, I'm going to put my email in the chat as well for you. If you want to email me, I can give you a list that we have for senior housing. And then I also wanted to draw people's attention to, in addition to the Dahlia Rentals webpage, there's the first come first served BMR rental listings. So those are opportunities that were previously listed on Dahlia, um, but now accepting applications on a first come first served basis. Do you have another question? Any other questions? I see from Alicia. Can you go ahead and come off mute and ask your question? Well, thank you so much for answering all of my questions. I know I have a million of them, <laughs> but I'm a senior. It feels like maybe I shouldn't be um, looking at certain Dahlia uh, listings, like um, because I'm looking for limited income or a really super affordable housing listings that are also for seniors. Is that the case or um, or are these listings including those um, limited income affordable housing units or not? I'm just trying to make sure that I manage my time appropriately. Yeah. yeah. Um, does anyone, yeah, do you have anything to add, Andy? Oh, you go first and I'll, I'll piggyback. Just yeah, so you're mm -hmm. you're more interested in like a senior housing is what I'm hearing. Yeah, just because I'm on I'm retired now and I I'm on limited income with my retirement income. I'm not able to really find work like I used to be able to because I'm older now and it seems like, you know, it's just getting more and more difficult for me to have a regular stable income outside of my retirement income. And so I feel like my options are limited or are they? And should I only be looking at certain listings or should I only be working with certain agencies or certain groups just to kind of manage my time and energy mm -hmm. being that I am older and I don't have a whole lot of energy looking for housing. Totally. <clears throat> well, I, I want to say that sometimes they're on the Dahlia rental um, portion, sometimes they do have uh, senior specific senior housing that are listed. I know there was one maybe like last month. Um, but um, if you look at that link I dropped in the chat for May's uh, open house affordable uh, listing, it's centered around um, for seniors. So that's, a, I think, a great place to start. Um, but yeah, you could what you could do is, you know, meet with one of the agencies um, to, you know, schedule a meeting with the counselor so that way they can go over, um, you know, your financial situation, what your housing goals are, and that way they can refer you to resources and available um, units that you, you could qualify for and can afford. So that's where I would start. Um, Andy, did you have anything to add? No, I think that's great. Yeah. I have something to add. I think that it will be very important for you to also work closely with the housing counselor. Uh, many times there are also opportunities for subsidies um, that you can apply to and subsidies are more than welcome in our housing opportunities. 
So um, I think that if you work closely with a housing counselor, they will be able to direct you to the right resources and the right housing opportunities for you. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Go ahead and add them in the chat or just come off mute and ask your question. I um, have a, one last question, Alicia, again. Um, is there a, um, a time period where these programs will not be available or are you guys only holding these workshops for a period of time and or will these services be available year round? Is it an old regular office um, hours or, you know, just I'm just curious about what the city's um, goals are in terms of placement are they trying to get everyone placed or is this part of the mayor's efforts for the next three years or whatever like that because I kind of feel like you know I'm just now hearing about more of this and just wondering about the deadlines or the periods <laughs> um yeah I can I can start so um the these um, there's no end date for the lottery preferences. They will go on indefinitely. <laughs> so, um, they're, yeah, they're, they're here. We, we are here year round, 365 days is just a year. So, um, no, nothing's going to expire and we are working to get the word out more. So, um, thank you for that. And yeah, that, that is something that we're working hard at to get to outreach more. So people know about the opportunities that are available. Well, oh, that's so good. That's so good because at right now I'm in a, an emergency situation where I have like one more month that I can afford to live where I'm living. And um, in the meantime, I have, I may have to move out of state while I'm still looking for housing there you know, just to be able to keep a roof over my head. Good to know. Thank you. Hi, this is Jeffrey. And I have a question. I just want to make sure that I understand this correctly. Uh, once your lottery number comes up and you're going through the application process and you qualify under your income limit, uh, let's say, for example, the income limit to qualify for a complex is 35000 and you're under that, and, and you qualify, and you move into the apartment. And then the following year, when you're going to renew your lease, your income has gone up to 38000 which puts you over the $35,000 mark. Do you, are you able to renew your lease, uh, or how does that work? Yeah, so you, um, your income, is, you have to continue to income qualify and um, you have to demonstrate that every year to, to be eligible for the BMR unit. Um, and the, so, does, it, does the AMI come up, does the AMI uh, income limits come uh, into play with that at all? Yeah, the so the area median income limits do or categories they they do shift every year, and so for example, they just increased based on you know what the median income is of the area this year. Um, so that that's taken into account as well. But um, but yeah, you do have to continue to income qualify for the unit that you bring in. Okay, thank you. I have a question. I'm trying to fill out the survey. I'm just wondering um, which workshop was this considered? The Dahlia Navigation or? This is the Decoding Lottery Preferences. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. 
Any other questions? Anyone else wants to ask? If not, or if not, we um do hope to um see you this Saturday at the Housing Expo from ten a.m. to two p.m. Um, yes, Saturday, May eighteenth. Um, we do look forward to seeing you all there in person. Um, if you can, please go ahead and fill out the evaluation survey. It's in the chat. Um, if you could just go ahead and fill that out if you can. <clears throat> but Thank yeah, if, of yeah. course, yeah, no one has, uh, Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. Does all. Anyone, oh, yeah, does anyone else want to add any closing remarks? No, just thank you all for participating, for attending. Appreciate it. Uh, yes, there will be a YouTube video of this presentation. Um, just go to Homeownership SF um, on YouTube, and it'll be on the channel. Um, Hopefully it'll be uploaded soon. Well, so this was the most informative workshop I've attended so far. Thank you. Oh, so great. Thank you, Alicia. YouTube channel will be Homeownership SF. That just search up Homeownership SF on YouTube and you should be able to uh, look up the page. Hello.